disability can't stop what God is doing. This guy was over 40 years old. We assume that he had been disabled for those 40 years. And he was in a very common gate uh, close to the temple. And uh, he would always ask, you know, he was, he was begging for resources, for money, for, for these things. And he comes across Peter and John and he says, you know, give, I'm disabled. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, I give. And he healed this man. Disability didn't stop God. And a lack of money, a lack of silver and gold didn't stop God. Those don't start with D, so I didn't put them in here. But, but God is unstoppable. Dollars, arrows, arrows. It's you guys. All of my notes now. The next time I give this sermon, I'll, I'll be better prepared. But you got to know that disability doesn't stop today? How do we own that in our life? Will we experience death or some form of death? Distance or some form of distance? Doubt or some form of doubt? Disability or some form of disability? Do we believe that our God is unstoppable? We should. It says, instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet. and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Do you think that Peter and John were, were filled with amazement at what had happened? They probably were to a degree, but they knew God in his unstoppable nature. They believed it and they healed him in the name of Jesus. So the difference between someone knowing that God is unstoppable and then doing something about it, people finding out that God is unstoppable and doing something about it, or people seeing something that had happened that's evidence in their face and shrugging it off, being amazed and perplexed, still doubting, not owning, and making fun of. <coughs> well, that guy, he, he just must have been, he must have been drunk. It must have just been an act. But when the people who knew him in this situation and knew the capability of God and his unstoppableness, not a word until now when I said it. You guys know the unstoppableness of God. That's when they realized it to a new degree, and it changed. Them. I hope it changes us. And then the disturbed in Acts four two, after the priests, the chief priests, the captains of the temple guard, the Sadducees, they were trying to figure out what to do with Peter and John because they were healing in the name of Jesus. I thought we were done with this. Didn't we crucify Jesus? Didn't we kill him? Yeah, there were those rumors that he was raised, but I thought we were done with dealing with this Jesus person. What are we going to do now that these guys are healing in his name and people are seeing it, they're amazed and, protect, uh, and perplexed, or they're completely um, in wonder and amazement uh, changed by what they saw. In the, in the meantime, as this has gone on, 3,000 uh, people were saved after Pentecost when, when Peter brought his message kind of explaining what had gone on. Um, after this happened, with the uh, um, with the, the person who was healed, the beggar who was healed, I can't say the person who was healed at the, beautiful, at the gate called Beautiful, uh, another couple thousand were added to the number of those who were being saved by what was going on. So the disturbed, the people who were disturbed by this, they changed their religion, they changed their status, their reasoning. It changed their everything. They wanted to figure out how to stop God. So what did they do? They seized Peter and John. They put them in jail. They warned them. They told them to stop uh, spreading this thing. They commanded them not to speak. They commanded them not to teach. Um, they hurled further threats at them. Uh, they flogged them. They ordered them not to speak. They did all of these things. The disturbed couldn't stop God. I want to read a part of the story because um, this, this is the main idea, but I want to give you guys a little bit of time to, to, to talk about uh, to talk about it. Okay, so I'll say this. So they were thrown in prison and um, Dude, tough, tough that I got out. 
Yeah, so it says, um, let's see, they arrest the apostles. The Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out and said, go and stand in the temple courts um, and tell all the people about this new life. At daybreak, they did that. The priest did it. They, they saw what had happened. Um, and they went, on arriving at the jail, the officers didn't find them there. They went back and reported. Uh, we found the jail securely locked. So then, when they heard this, they were furious. They wanted to put them to death, but a Pharisee named Gamaliel, teacher of the law, who was honored by the people, stood up with the same Peter and ordered the men to be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the same Peter. And basically, this was his address. If their effort is of human origin, they will fail. You don't have to worry about putting them in prison and then getting out. You don't have to worry about flogging them and punishing them what to do with them, because if they go down, right, if they're martyrs for the faith, then God is going to bring out someone, he's going to bring up someone else who's going to carry this message and heal in the name of Jesus and carry out his good, pleasing, perfect, and unstoppable will. It's just going to be someone else. So Gamaliel said, look, if you got, I mean, y'all can, you're going to make yourself sick. You're going to waste your time. I feel bad for the, uh, the guards who said, well, or sleep until, you know, we find these guys and then they never found them. So I wonder what happened now. I wonder if they stayed by their own. So you're, you're going to be in a bad way. If you try and stop God, it's not going to happen for you. So Gamila said, look, if their effort is of human origin, it will fail. Then you can rescue them. But if what they're doing is of God, then not only will you not be able to stop them, but you will find yourselves opposing My question to you, my question to you, one is, where are you limiting God? Where are you limiting God? Where are you seeing the unstoppableness of God? Amazed and perplexed and limiting. Where in your life are you amazed and perplexed at what God is doing? You're limiting the power of this unstoppable. strong language. <laughs> I'm not opposing God. Where are you snuffing out the Spirit? Where you're snuffing out the Spirit, you might be opposing God. Where you're getting in a 